Welcome to the third episode of this series on building a blog with Laravel and Vue.js. So today we'll be working on making the sidebar sticky. So when we scroll down like this, we never want to have this white space on the left. We always want our sidebar content to be visible. So we'll open the code editor and we'll open sidebar.blade and we'll give it a class of fixed top and we'll open sidebar.scss and we'll give it a style. So fixed top and it's going to be position fixed and top zero pixels. If we go back to the browser and we refresh, you can see that it's now uh, fixed to the top. However, uh, when we do position fixed, it takes the element out of the page flow, which means that this main content part now takes up the full width and it gets hidden behind the sidebar and that's not what we want. So there's a couple ways we could fix this. One of them would be to give some padding left to this main content. So we'll try that first and we'll see why that doesn't really solve our problem. So I'll do layout.scss here. And on our main, we do padding left and we'll take the width of um, the sidebar and we need to add the padding of the main. So this is going to be uh, 48 plus 24, which is 72. And we save and if we refresh, you can see that we fixed the overlapping content. However, we also have a problem here where uh, the sidebar doesn't take the full height anymore. So that's not the way we're going to fix this. So let's go back here and we'll remove uh, this padding here. And instead, we'll go back to sidebar and we'll give the sidebar a sidebar content wrapper like this. And we'll put everything inside of it like this. And we can fix the indenting like that. And now we're going to remove this uh, fixed top class from here and we'll put it here instead. Fixed top. Go back to sidebar.scss here and we'll do uh, sidebar content and we'll move this inside like this. And this one we we'll need to give it a width. So we'll do layout scss. We'll grab the width here and we'll give this the same width and we'll remove the padding from here and put the padding um, inside of here instead. So next, if we go back to the browser and we refresh the page, you can see that we have our content on the right, we have our sidebar on the left, and if we scroll down, the sidebar stays sticky to the top. Now, the reason that this works is because our sidebar height happens to be smaller than our window height. And if we had a smaller window, or more content on the sidebar, it would break down so we can fake it by opening our dev tools. And now you see that if we scroll down, the sidebar doesn't scroll at all, which means that we can't access the links that are below here. So that's a problem and we need to fix it. The behavior that we want is that if the sidebar is bigger than the window height, when we scroll down, we want the sidebar to scroll up until we reach the bottom of the sidebar and then we need to sticky it to the bottom. So to do this, we'll go back to the editor and we'll open add.js. And okay, so we need some data. So we'll do data and we'll return an object and this is for the sidebar. So we'll do, uh, we'll need the height of the sidebar. So it's gonna be zero for now. And we need the window height, it's gonna be zero for now. So next we need to set those. So we'll use the uh, mounted lifecycle hook and we'll do this dot calculate, uh, calculate uh, sidebar. So we'll create a, a method, so it's gonna be uh, calculate sidebar and the first thing we need is the sidebar uh, height so we'll do is equal to okay so we need a way to reference the sidebar so we'll go to sidebar.blade and we'll give it a ref of sidebar content and we can actually remove uh, the fixed top style while we're here and also give it a dynamic class of sidebar styles okay so back to the app.js we can now do refs dot sidebar content dot offset height. So this is going to give us the height of the sidebar. Next, we need the uh, window height. So we'll do is equal to window dot inner height. So we have it. Next, we'll need to create our dynamic style. So we'll do computed. And it's going to be a property called uh, sidebar styles. And for now, we can just return nothing and we can save and we go back to the browser and we refresh. And if we open our view dev tools, we can look here and we have our sidebar height and we have our window height. Now we need this to update whenever the window height changes. So we'll go back to the editor and we'll use uh, the created 
lifecycle hook, so created, and we'll do window dot add event listener, and it's going to be for resize. I'm going to do this dot handle resize. So we'll create the method. So it's going to be handle resize, and we'll use underscore to throttle it. So we'll do throttle, and then it's going to call this calculate sidebar uh, function, and we're going to give it a duration of 100. So we save and we go back and we refresh. And now if you go root, you can see that we have our window height and it gets updated as we resize the window. Perfect. So we can uh, close this and go back to the editor. We'll set our first dynamic style. So we'll do if this dot uh, sidebar height is less than or equal to the window height, we will return a fixed top to be true. So we'll save and if we refresh here, you can see that it's actually working. So the sidebar content is smart in the window, so it's sticking to the top, but if we open our dev tools again, it should scroll and it does. Now, what we need to do is when we get to this point, so the bottom of the sidebar, it needs to become uh, fixed to the bottom of the window so it doesn't uh, show white space on the left anymore. So we'll do that next. So we'll go back to the editor. And before we can add another uh, sidebar styles, we need to know how far down the page we are. So we'll add another property here and we'll do window scroll top and we'll set it to zero for now. And we'll create another uh, here, another window uh, event listener. So event listener and it will be for scroll and it's going to be this dot handle scroll. So we'll create that now. So we'll do uh, handle scroll. And once again, we're going to uh, throttle it. So we'll do function and like this and the duration is going to be uh, 100 as well. And we'll do this dot sidebar dot window scroll top is equal to window dot page y offset and if that's not available for Internet Explorer 9, we'll do document dot document element dot scroll top. And if we go back to the browser and refresh the page and open our dev tools like this and we open the root and you can see that the window scroll top updates as we scroll down the page. So we'll close this and we'll go back to the code editor and we'll go to our computed properties and we'll add our second style and we'll do this dot sidebar dot window scroll top plus the window height and if it's bigger than the sidebar height we will return fixed bottom to be true so if you think about it if the window scroll top plus the window height is bigger than the sidebar height it means we've scrolled past the bottom of the sidebar so at that point we want to add a class called fixed bottom so we'll go to sidebar.scss and we will add fixed bottom and it's going to be position fixed and bottom zero pixels. So if we save and we go back to the browser and we refresh the page, you can see that if we scroll down, the sidebar stays sticky to the top. But if we make the window smaller and we scroll down, it will scroll for a little bit and then it gets stuck to the bottom of the page as we scroll down. So this will conclude today's video. In the next episode, we'll be making the website responsive. But in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next video.